For the longest time, if you were in India and looking to buy an ultra premium foldable phone, your go-to was pretty much the Samsung Galaxy Fold series. Sure, there are those clamshell foldables from Oppo and Motorola, but for large format foldables, Samsung's been the undisputed king. Well, until now. This is the OnePlus Open, OnePlus's first foray into the world of hinged phones. And it's not just here to participate, it's ready to give Samsung a run for its money right off the bat. Having carried around the OnePlus Open for a few weeks, I can tell you that its appearance is somewhat misleading. The phone's slab-like sides and humongous camera bump give it a somewhat intimidating look. And holding it can feel a bit awkward, especially due to the camera's position forcing your grip lower on the casing. But trust me when I say this, looks can be deceptive. The Open is surprisingly light thanks to OnePlus using ultra-light alloys and adopting some smart design choices. It's actually both lighter and slimmer than the Galaxy Z Fold 5, and when I slip it into my pocket, it feels more like a regular phone rather than a foldable. The hinge mechanism on the Open deserves praise too. It's perfectly calibrated to allow for a mini laptop mode, and when fully opened, it snaps into place with a satisfying click. As with most foldable phones, there's a crease on the main screen if you're looking for it, but it's less pronounced compared to the Fold 5, resulting in a smoother and cleaner appearance. On the flip side, while Samsung's foldables are a bit heavier and creasier, they do come with an IPX8 rating, so they can take a dunk in water without a fuss. The OnePlus Open, on the other hand, is only splash-proof with an IPX4 rating. It's not really a huge issue, but there's always that question about how well it'll hold up in the long haul, since the tech is relatively new. Now, when it comes to design choices, there aren't a ton of options here. You've got the Emerald Dusk version with its classic glass back, and while it's perfectly fine, I'd pick this Voyager Black variant any day of the week. There's something about the rich, warm texture of the leather that feels great in your hand, and it can handle a fair amount of abuse as well. Another bonus is that it comes with a protective case right in the box, a thoughtful addition that I really appreciate, especially considering that Samsung's foldables don't come with one. And talking about things I appreciate, the alert slider is very much alive and kicking on the open. It's still present on the right side and remains super convenient for quickly silencing unwanted notifications or calls. I've also got to give a shout out to OnePlus for bringing back a classic Android feature, the IR Blaster. It's a lifesaver when your smart TV or AC remote goes missing, and it's a feature you don't often get to see on high-end phones these days. That being said though, and this is a bit of a head scratcher, OnePlus included an IR Blaster in the open, but decided to skip out on wireless charging. That feels like a bit of a mix-up in priorities, especially for a phone that costs 140,000 rupees. I mean, look, if you don't care about wireless charging, then the lack of it on the OnePlus Open might not necessarily be a deal breaker. But here's the thing, almost every flagship phone in India comes with wireless charging. So it is likely that a lot of people looking to switch to the Open already have a charging pad or two lying around at home. More importantly though, and I can't stress this enough, charging your phone is about choice, not limitations. Okay, now with that out of the way, let's switch gears and focus on a more positive aspect of the OnePlus Open, the displays. Similar to Samsung's Galaxy Fold series, the OnePlus Open boasts two screens, a slimmer 6.31 inch exterior display and a larger 7.82 inch panel inside. Both screens are slightly bigger than the ones on the Fold 5, and both displays come with a variable 120Hz refresh rate. But what OnePlus really emphasizes is the brightness. We're talking about 1400 nits in normal use and up to an astonishing 2800 nits in specific scenarios like watching HDR content outdoors. And again, this impressive brightness level is consistent on both screens. Now I know that it's the inner display that usually gets all the attention in foldables, but I think that the Open's cover display is the real star. It has a traditional 20 is to 9 aspect ratio, similar to many regular phones, meaning it's comfortably wide. This is a noticeable difference from Samsung's Fold series and allows for easier typing of emails and messages without compromising screen space. 
In fact, I found myself using the outer screen most of the time, only switching to the larger inner display for things like streaming videos or multitasking. Now that we're on the subject of multitasking, it's worth mentioning how well the Open handles it. I'm not saying it's better than Samsung's approach on their foldables, but over the past two years, Oppo has diligently crafted a strong software foundation since their merger with OnePlus. And this expertise is now reflected in Oxygen OS, which seems tailor-made for a foldable format. For starters, there's a versatile taskbar that you can show or hide as needed, which not only displays your recent apps, but also includes a folder for recent documents. Plus there's support for floating windows, you can place these anywhere on the screen and adjust their size to your preference. I also like that when you swipe up into the app switcher on the main screen, you get two columns of app cards smartly taking advantage of that larger screen space. Now, of course you can do the basic stuff like using two apps side by side in split screen mode. But if you're feeling adventurous, then you can use the new Open Canvas feature, which allows you to have three apps open simultaneously, each with its own little tab for easy access and rearrangement. It's kind of like having individual app cards that you can slide in and out at will, and the setup works quite seamlessly. It still doesn't quite match the flexibility of Samsung's 4-app multitasking, but for a first attempt, it's very commendable, and I'm sure that it'll only get better with future software updates. Speaking of which, OnePlus has promised 4 years of OS upgrades and 5 years of security updates for the Open. This brings them on par with Samsung's commitment to the Galaxy Z Fold 5 and the Galaxy S23 series. You'd also be happy to know that the OnePlus Open excels in the regular phone department too. It's equipped with a Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chipset, offers a generous 512 GB of storage, and comes with a hefty 16 GB of RAM. This is a potent setup that ensures smooth performance for everyday tasks and high graphic gaming without any hiccups. Moreover, the 8 Gen 2 chipset seems to manage heat better than its predecessors and is quite efficient with battery life. Getting through a full day of binge watching shows, casual gaming, listening to music and taking photos was no problem and that too with a comfortable margin to spare. Of course OnePlus does include a 67 watt fast wired charger in the box and while that doesn't make up for the lack of wireless charging, it can fully power up the Open in under an hour. Finally let's talk about the cameras on the Open and they are without a doubt the best on any OnePlus phone so far. There's a 48 megapixel Sony LYT T808 main camera alongside a 48 megapixel ultra wide and a 64 megapixel telephoto lens. The Hasselblad touch is clear in the colors, they're warm, handle mixed lighting well, and look more natural compared to Samsung's often oversaturated hues. The main camera's Sony sensor excels in low light, but it sometimes creates an odd halo effect around people's heads. Portraits are generally nice, though it can struggle a bit with some details like hair strands. The telephoto lens offering up to 6x lossless zoom and even 120x digital zoom is fun to play with, though it's best to stick with the 3x and 6x range for better results. The ultra wide isn't as versatile, but it's great for macro shots. I also really love the X-Band feature. I know it's been around on OnePlus phones before, but the wide image format and unique style it brings can really jazz up your regular photos, giving them a more cinematic vibe. In terms of video recording, both the main and ultra wide cameras max out at 4K 60fps. If you want to use the more robust stabilization mode though, you'll need to switch it down to 1080p. The video quality itself is pretty sharp and there's not much of a white balance shift, which is always a plus. For selfies, there's a 32 megapixel front camera on the cover screen and a 20 megapixel camera on the inner display, both decent in good lighting conditions. But for the best results, I suggest you use the phone's rear camera with the outer screen as your preview. You'll get way better resolution this way, making your selfies look super crisp and detailed. Okay, so that's the entire lowdown on the OnePlus Open. It's got excellent cameras, amazing displays, a solid hinge, and it feels more like a regular phone when it's closed. Plus, it's 15,000 rupees cheaper than the Galaxy Z Fold 5. And while that doesn't exactly put it in the budget category, the Open definitely puts some heat on Samsung in the foldable phone market. They'll definitely need to step up their game to convince us that their pricier models are worth the extra cash next time around. But for now, it's more than fair to say that OnePlus is open for business.